LCSL. Glad to be with you on the first Sunday of 2021. Feels like a different year already, doesn't it? The breath of God is breathing me and resting. Tony. Good morning. All right, Kat, you got to stay down. <laughs> Happy New Year, Oakland Center for Spiritual Living. And first, uh, how uh, thankful I am to start the new year. Uh, and let's give some shout outs and love and bless Kept Choice and Omega Ray. Mwah! 
All right, I am your host this morning, Reverend Tony Bradford, staff minister, and I am welcoming you all to the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living virtual service. This is where we teach spiritual principles and practices that nourish us, uplift us, and celebrate, if I get my computer going, and celebrate our oneness with all of life. And very special blessings to all of you who are joining us via Zoom today for the very first time. And we have a lot of visiting ministers in the house and I am honored and blessed and love you all uh, for showing up today on this first service of 2021. This virtual, virtual service would not be the same without you. And if you would like to connect with us, please send an email to Constance Chapman, our administrative coordinator at Constance at oaklandcsl.org. And a little housekeeping. In order to maintain a sacred atmosphere this morning, I invite you to take a moment uh, to make sure your Zoom microphone and video are turned off and muted. So as we do every week, uh, and, and uh, can we have the first slide? Let us take a moment to bless our children wherever they are as they step into 2021. And we have an affirmation and please say it all together. And if you have some young folks in the house, let them uh, know how much we care and love them. All together, we honor all our youth and children in our community and the world. We love you, we see you, you are spirit's gift to us. Thank you for being in our lives, and so it is. All right, so I got a lot of announcements this morning for 2021, and let's go. So slide two. There's a minister rubbing a tree right there. <laughs> and that's our own Reverend Sally. Uh, she will continue the discussion that she'll have with us today uh, in her wonderful talk, and she will do that uh, this coming Wednesday, January 6, 2021, the start of a brand new year of Wednesday Satsang Services. So please join Sally and the team uh, this Wednesday, meditations at 6.30 p.m., and service begins at 7. Next slide. Uh, we love these slides today. Today is the last day to register for the visual, excuse me, the virtual vision board party. Be prepared for 2021 by being clear of the vision you want to manifest. This virtual event will start off on January the 9th. You will be led into what you want to manifest for 2021 and talk about the logistics of doing the vision board uh, from your home. It's a fun new way and I think it's exciting. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as you know, the manifestations are still the same. This is a virtual party affair. So I invite you to bring a friend, your partner and or your entire family. Then on January 30th, Everyone will gather to show and share their visual version for 2021. This is a fun fundraiser for OCSL, and no one will be turned away. Suggested love offering is $50 or more per person, and what a wonderful way to start 2021. Remember, you are encouraged to bring a friend, partner, or your whole family to the party no one will be turned away. All right, slide four. After service today at 12.30 p.m., the Compassionate Attention to Loss group is meeting. The January theme is the rumble of change, its challenges and gifts. The Zoom information for today's uh, 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 meeting at 12.30 uh, is on our events page uh, on our Oakland Center for Spiritual Living website. So if you are encouraged uh, and feeling like you want to be part of it, 
please go to that website and look at the Zoom information on the events page and click on in. All right, next slide. Did you know the Centers for Spiritual Living, our home office, sponsors wonderful virtual events? So going into 2021, this is your opportunity to get connected with like-minded folks around the world. Coming up, One Mind, Infinite Connection. It's, it's called Vista 2021 Virtual Convention. It's February the 15th through the 18th, 2021. It's three days virtually packed with wonderful, invited, well-known speakers. Meet and hear our spiritual leadership and attend virtual workshops, listen to other CSL ministers and practitioners speak, hear and see incredible new thought musicians and singers. Plus, it's your opportunity virtually to be with other like-minded folks from around the world and make some new friends in 2021. Register now and save, and you'll see that information on our website. Uh, check out the conference at csl.org. And while you're on their website, and this is the home office website, just what you're seeing now, um, sign up for their newsletter. Uh, so you'll get direct access to information on events and special opportunities around the world. All right, next slide, please. So back here at Oakland Center for Spiritual Living Virtual, remember to, remember to sign up for the Sacred Circle series uh, for Black, Indigenous, and people of color. The series starts the first week of January, and this series is being offered by our home office and offers an opportunity to explore the impact of uh, uh, racialized trauma. And you sign up for this information, or you'll get more information about how to sign up uh, in our village news. Uh, 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 Constance uh, put a little information on the one that was posted or sent out this week and check again on Monday or Tuesday when she sends it out again. Slide seven, please. Ah, sacred service. If you are a voting member of Oakland Center and would like to serve your village, consider applying to be on the Board of Trustees. For more information, contact Deborah Jackson, and you also can download an application from our homepage. Uh, and that homepage, again, is Oakland Center for Spirit, Oakland, OCSL.org website. The application will have more details uh, and a lot more information and probably can answer a few of the questions you might be wondering about uh, uh, about joining and contributing sacred service uh, as a board member. So please, if you are inclined, go to the website. All right, thank you. Next slide. And this is your teaser. Save the date. Winter classes will be starting on Tuesday, January 19th, 2021. And we are still crafting and uh, creating uh, the wonderful classes for both winter and spring. And in the class, uh, this one for sure, you will learn an amazing spiritual practice. One we have not done at Oakland Center for a while. So details will come uh, uh, next week and we'll give you more information as uh, we get closer, but save the date, January 19th, and it's a Tuesday, and that'll be our first uh, virtual class of 2021. So as I finish, uh, for more information, current updates from Constance, plus a repeat of what I announced this morning, visit our OCSL website at www.OaklandCenterForSpiritualLivingCSL.org. Also, you'll find, find that we share a few updates on many more groups, ministries, and events happening in 2021 at OCSL, and info to pass on from our CSL home office. I invite you to make a weekly check of our website. Uh, again, that website address is www.OaklandCenterForSpiritualLiving.org. Our website, again, is a source of information as we continue into 2021 to shelter in grace. 
All right, last slide, and you are going to enjoy this one. So our vision of the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living, please say along with me as I read our vision and mission statement and look at that wonderful, wonderful uh, graphic and that shows our um, stained glass windows in the sanctuary. And I hope it brings you some good smiles and know that 2021 is gonna be fabulous. So together on three, one, two, three. The vision of the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living is to joyfully reveal the love and oneness of God. We are a welcoming and inclusive spiritual community dedicated to individual transformation and collective growth. Our purpose is to love, inspire, and serve our community and the world through education, music, prayers, and play. And so it is. All right. Um, that was a lot. Uh, please, again, go to our website to get more details if you missed something. And next, I am honored to pass on and welcome into 2021, Practitioner Susan Eckhart Brown. Good morning, OCSL. <clears throat> Thank you, Reverend Tony. And uh, I have two readings for you. So let's just settle in. And if you would like to close your eyes to take in the readings, uh, I certainly invite you to do that. So the first reading is from uh, Ernest Holmes, our founder. <laughs> there is a power within us, which is greater than any condition we can ever contact. It knows no obstruction, no obstacle. It transcends all because it is the final fact of creation, the almighty indwelling our own souls. And the second reading is from Ephesians. And this is it with a beautiful graphic. There is a power at work within us that is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. So let's take these readings within into our prayer this morning, just recognizing the one, the beauty of nature, that the God inspired nature that is us, that is inclusive of everything. And also we are one with it in every, every precious moment. Ah, just breathing into that knowingness. And recognizing and appreciating our step into our new year of 2021 following our theme of timeless wisdom and evolutionary vision, that we dip into the timelessness of our own soul, looking within to see that which is ours to be and do in this very moment. And I am claiming and knowing there is abundant peace. There is joy, there is prosperity, generosity, and kindness. <sighs> Certainly in this moment in our beloved Oakland Center for Spiritual Living. So I bless this servant today. I bless Reverend Sally as she shares her timeless wisdom with us this morning. I bless our beloved Reverend uh, Jeff and all of our beautiful, beautiful community. Ah, how good it is to know that we are here together and expressing exactly what is ours to express in this very moment. So I know all is moving in divine right timing and divine right knowingness. And all there is to do is to release this word with great thanksgiving. 
and join with me in saying, and so it is. Amen. And now it is my joy to introduce our musicians of the day, Kev Choice and Omega Ray. lives they don't concern me the future and my past are rolled into this moment in God is eternal my life in God is eternal and I am free forevermore my search is over and I in thee, in thee, I rest in thee, I rest in thee, I rest in thee, oh, something in me knew this all along. freedom song and this song is sung by the heavenly host I rest in thee I rest in thee something in me knew this all along that my life is a melody for God's song Heavenly host, I rest in thee. I rest in thee. My destiny has been fulfilled by you, fulfilled by you. And I rest in thee, in thee, I rest in thee, I, I rest in thee, oh, I rest in thee.
like to introduce Reverend Sally. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Omega Ray and Kev Choice. I rest in thee. Oh my goodness, we are so blessed. Welcome, Oakland Center for Spiritual Living and Happy New Year. <laughs> hey! I'd like everyone to take a few minutes just to turn on your cameras, keep your microphones muted, but I would love the opportunity to see our village and to honor and give thanks for the fact that we made it. <laughs> Yay! Oh my gosh, what a lovely village we have. And it's so good to see everybody with us this morning. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Sally. Good morning, good morning. Like I said, we made it. We made it past that year of 2020. And, you know, we're going into this thought of steeping ourselves in timeless wisdom. And I must admit that I'm kind of feeling a little bit like a tea bag, tea bag that has been oversteeped. So we are on the cusp of a brand new year. And I am so glad that you are all here this Sunday sharing this beginning with me and with us. You know, it's, it's interesting that it just takes a few moments to center in and be grateful and connect with that one life, that one power, that one presence. And when we do, it makes all the difference. So thank you. Thank you for doing that with me this morning. Let me tell you that this year's theme, 2021, the theme for Centers for Spiritual Living is timeless wisdom and evolutionary vision. Now we find timeless wisdom within our spiritual principles, kind of outlined in what we believe. And we find evolutionary vision within our global vision of a world that works for everyone. Much of what you hear this year from me and from the other speakers that will be presenting, it'll sound familiar. And as we listen, each of us will find ourselves in a slightly different place along that evolutionary spiral of life than we've ever been before. And that's a good thing. And what I know is that we'll, we'll hear what is said in a new way and we'll find new insights and revelations expanding upon them and elevating our collective understanding throughout this year. Timeless wisdom. Be still and know God. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. <sighs> yes the fundamental principles of the science of mind. Got my little prop here. Maybe I do have a prop today. Oneness, love, creation, freedom, eternal life. Just to name a few of these, these are ageless ideas that cross many spiritual traditions. And we learn about these in our classes. You know, we had that little teaser in the announcements and our classes are a great place to come together to be steeped in spiritual wisdom. Ernest Holmes, our founder, he studied many of the world's religions, spiritual philosophies and the science of his time to develop his own understanding of the cosmos. He synthesized the common elements, tapping into the infinite, inter eternal within, which is God. And now we have the opportunity to continue this process of evolution, building upon this knowledge. So what is evolution? Well, Ernest tells us 
that evolution is proof of an irresistible urge which pushes everything onward and upward. Now, humankind did not create life. Humankind is something that lives in, from, and by it. Humankind cannot escape life or the necessity of giving expression to it through living. This is evolution, as Ernest says in this thing called you. Now in the glossary of the Science of Mind textbook, Ernest defines evolution as the passing of spirit into form. It's the unfoldment of first cause that is what we call evolution. Okay, so how does timeless wisdom relate to evolution? Well, Ernest tells us spiritual wisdom says that God manifests through everything and is incarnated in all people and that all is divinity and that nature herself is the body of God. The mechanical laws of nature like gravity or electricity are set and immutable, but the spontaneous recognition of these laws, that's what gives us the power to bring them into practical use in everyday life and experience. You can think of airplanes or toasters, right? So timeless wisdom. There is a power for good in the universe, and we can use it. As I, as we use it, we evolve. So what am I, what are you to evolve into? Timeless wisdom tells us the answer to that question. It's easy. I am, you are, a divine being made in the image and the likeness of the one, holy, H-O-L-Y, perfect expression of the one life, divine by design. This is the wisdom of the ages. Jesus of Nazareth provided us with one of the best examples of this evolutionary goal made manifest by becoming the Christ. Mother Teresa, the Dalai Lama, Buddha, Martin Luther King, and many, many others can be cited as examples of individuals who have lived their unique and divine paths. Okay, <laughs> I can feel myself and maybe others holding your breaths. Oh, what about me? Okay, let's breathe. I understand the challenges, especially after living through this past year of turmoil. I am, we are human and apparently subject to all kinds of limitations. So how do we spiritually evolve? How do we manifest this divine design of our higher self here on this plane? Well, science of mind teaches us to use our consciousness, our thinking, to change our lives. Now, in preparation for our virtual, first ever virtual vision board party, I was watching YouTube videos of Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith. Maybe you've watched some videos of his too. And one thing I heard him say was that natural evolution for humans stopped the moment our consciousness developed the ability to think 
independently of circumstances and our history. Wow, this sounded familiar to me. From that point forward, humans have been able to rise above what's called the law of averages or natural selection and make new and different choices for ourselves and our loved ones. This evolutionary pull is God calling us out of the averages up to our higher calling. Steeped in the wisdom of the ages, I humbly resolve to evolve. How does one steep oneself in the wisdom of the ages? Sacred study, spiritual classes. These, these are my most favorite examples. You know, recently I reread a little book. The book is called The Game of Life, and it's by Florence Scovel Shin. And actually, this one's two books. It's the way it was written initially and then written for the feminine gender, The Game of Life for Women. And so there's so many words of wisdom in this little book, and I'm going to share some of them with you today. Some of this might sound familiar, and if it does, that's good. Let's start with the idea that she shares that we have three departments within our minds. This might sound familiar if you've heard Reverend Beckwith's life visioning materials. It's kind of similar. Shin says that we have levels of consciousness that we use every day. The subconscious, the conscious, and the superconscious. Now, they're not really separate rooms, so to speak, more like just the way our minds work in any given moment. The subconscious level, Shin says, and Ernest agrees, is simply power without direction. This relates to the, I guess my dog likes this too. <laughs> this relates to the middle section of our teaching symbol and is also known as the law or the doer. It's like electricity. It does what it is directed to do without volition or choice. Now, our feelings and imagination, they provide the intensity to this power. Like that dimmer switch that I shared in my last talk, the conscious mind often called the mortal or the carnal mind, well, that sees life as it appears to be. It's our intellect or our reasoning mind. And it sees the apparent polarity of life, good and bad. Health, wealth, love, self-expression, and death, disaster, sickness, poverty, limitation. But the conscious mind also directs the subconscious mind. So that gives it power. It's that part of our mind, the conscious mind is, that believes it's being realistic when it's analyzing, but it doesn't realize that realistic means real like. And as Beckwith says, it's a pretense. It's playing at being real. The superconscious mind is real. It's the God mind or the Christ consciousness within each of us. And this, this is the realm of perfect ideas. Timeless wisdom tells us that we are each unique emanations of the one mind. And there is a perfect pattern or place in the world that only we individually are to fill and no one else can fill it. It's something that we are to do, which no one else, no average person can do. The superconscious mind 
provides the perfect idea or the evolutionary vision for each of us. You know, this uh, makes me think of some of the sayings that I learned early on in my study of science of mind. As above, so below. First, it happens in spirit, in the divine design, and then it manifests into form. Now, author Melody Beatty tells us that we should take time to develop a vision for all that we want to do. Let our vision guide us. And Reverend Beckwith says that pain pushes until vision pulls. This makes sense to me. Our Oakland Center for Spiritual Living vision statement says our purpose is to love, inspire, and serve our community and the world through education, music, prayer, and play. I encourage us to play with the process as we will in the vision board party next Saturday. And yes, that's a shameless plug, but it is so much fun to play with these evolutionary ideas, allowing spirit to flood us with the God good images and ideas of what we are here to experience and do. So thinking about this vision board party next weekend, I noticed in the readings on the game of life that Shin says she's often asked about the difference between visualizing and visioning. And she says that visualizing is really just a mental process. It's governed by the reasoning or the conscious mind. Visioning is a spiritual process. It's governed by intuition or the superconscious mind, the Christ consciousness within us. And she continues to say, just like Omega's song, she says, God's plan for each person transcends the limitation of the reasoning mind. And it's always the square of life. Now, I love this idea of a square of life. Picture for yourself a square on the plate. And the square of life is health, wealth, love, and self-expression. The Christ within is our fourth dimensional self. It's the inner self made in God's image and likeness. You know, this self has never failed. This self has never known sickness or sorrow, was never born and will never die. This means that God, the universal, becomes the Christ in us. So daily, we are manifesting the Christ within. All power is given to each person through right thinking to bring their heaven upon their earth. And this, as Florence says in her book, this is the goal of the game of life. So we are here to evolve and reveal the Christ within us. Each is given a unique and individualized self-expression. So what I have found to be true for myself is that when I can stop focusing on the noise of the world and pay attention to and, and listen for those divine inspirations and intuitions, and I'll tell you, they show up at any time, when they show up and then I take action on these prompts, that divine plan for me flows in and through my life with ease and grace. <sighs> yeah, the only thing that ever gets in the way is me. I mean, you know, the little me that can be full of fear and doubt, visualizing all kinds of catastrophes, denying that anything so 
good as health, wealth, love, and self-expression could possibly be for me. <laughs> and thinking, of course, that I have to do it all by myself, have a plan. Yeah. Now I might be the only one who ever feels this way. So we're, we're going to just set that aside for right now. And we're going to talk about our readings for today. Our readings say that there is a power within us which is greater than any condition we can ever contact. Any condition we can ever make up in our heads by visualizing. It knows no obstruction, no obstacle. It transcends all because it is the final fact of creation. The almighty indwelling our own souls. And from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, there is a power at work within us that is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we could ask or imagine. So I'd like to leave you with a short story. It's from Nori Huddle in her book, Butterfly. And I find great comfort and inspiration from this description. And I find myself imagining that I am the butterfly. It's entitled, How a Caterpillar Becomes a Butterfly. If you kneel down on the ground and look at a caterpillar very carefully, you'd probably think, He's a pretty nice furry fellow with a rather boring life. And you might be right. But the caterpillar does have one big surprise for you, which is the story of how he becomes a butterfly. For most of his life, all the caterpillar does is crawl around on leaves and plants up and down, down and up eating and eating and eating until one day our furry little caterpillar starts to spin long silky threads all around himself. And as he weaves a beautiful little chrysalis around and around and around until he's completely surrounded by these silken walls, after our caterpillar has finished his chrysalis, there start to appear in his own body cells that have never been there before. And the caterpillar's new cells are called imaginal cells. They are so totally different from the caterpillar cells that his immune system thinks they are the enemy and gobbles them up. But these imaginal cells continue to appear more and more and more of them. And pretty soon the caterpillar's immune system, well, it can't destroy them fast enough. More and more of these imaginal cells survive. And then an amazing thing happens. The tiny, lonely, imaginal cells, well, they start to clump together into friendly little groups and they all resonate together at the same frequency passing information from one to another. And then after a while, another amazing thing happens. The clumps of imaginal cells start to cluster together. A long string of clumping and clustering imaginal cells, they're all resonating at the same frequency, all passing information from one to another inside the chrysalis. And then at some point, the entire long string of imaginal cells, they suddenly realize all together that it's something different than the caterpillar, something new, something wonderful. And in that realization is the shout of the birth of the butterfly. Now, since the butterfly knows that it is a butterfly, the tiny little imaginal cells 
they no longer have to do all those things that individual cells must do. Now they are part of a multi-celled organism, a family, a team who can share the work. Each butterfly cell can take on a different job. There is something for everyone to do. And everyone is important. And each cell begins to do just that very thing it is most drawn to do. And every other cell encourages it to do just that. What a great way to organize a butterfly. What a great way to organize a human life. What a great way to organize a spiritual community. This year, we are encouraged to center in timeless wisdom. We steep ourselves in sacred study and the embodiment of the wisdom of all faiths and all cultures to allow ourselves a broader awareness and care of the greater reality of life. We humbly honor the ancestry of our teaching by acknowledging the synthesis of universal teachings embodied in them. With this grounding of timeless wisdom, we can open to the evolutionary impulse that is always calling us inward to the deeper part of ourselves and upward to the greater reality of our individual and collective evolution of consciousness. We prepare ourselves by cultivating the consciousness of opening to the new thing that God is doing in, as, and through us and all beings, we are called to let go of our realistic limitations, to be able to perceive beyond our current perspective to what is real. There are new thinkers and spiritual teachers who know more than us and have experienced God in deeper and more profound ways than us. And we open up to the wisdom of our time that expands on and amplifies these teachings of our movement in ways that we could never have imagined. Steeped in the wisdom of the ages, I humbly resolve to evolve. And so it is. Thank you, beloveds, for listening to me this morning. I know that some of it will have sounded familiar, and I trust that you heard what you needed to hear. And now I invite us to go into prayer. So allow yourselves to get comfortable where you are. Maybe close your eyes if you'd like, and I'll take us into prayer. As I turn within, allowing myself to be steeped within the wisdom of the ages, recognizing that there is one, one power, one presence, one divine design that includes all, that is all, that lives and breathes and is itself in each and every individual particular thing. It is God, Allah, the one. And I know that it is living itself in through and as my life as my life when I'm in the caterpillar form and as my life when I'm in that butterfly form. It is all life, including the in-between liquefied mess. God is. 
And I am so grateful to know that this life is my life as it is the life of each and every beloved on this call. Each and every beloved of the beloved on this call, God is it all. And knowing this, I simply give thanks. I give thanks for this brand new year, knowing that we step forward, steeped in wisdom and evolving, evolving into that evolutionary vision of a world that works for everyone. And we are part of it. And I speak a word of blessing today for our nonprofit partner, Village in Oakland. This is a group of seasoned community activists and others working to make human dignity and housing a human right. I speak a word for our planet Earth, a word of gratitude for her beauty and resilience and our increasingly mindful stewardship of her. I speak a word blessing all those in service to creating a world that works for everyone, each one stepping into their divine calling to make this so. I speak a word blessing our youth and the youth of the world, knowing that they are guided by the loving mind and heart of spirit. And I speak words of love and comfort and healing for all those impacted by challenges in whatever form, including Reverend Jeff Anderson, Taylor, Phyllis, Volmi, Layla, Doris Reed, Alan Johnson Jr., Denise Coates Jr., Keith Cleveland, and all those impacted by COVID-19 or any and every challenge. I know that God is in the midst. God is the four square of life fully present right there where these beloveds are. And I speak a word of peace and comfort for those who have made their transition and their loved ones, speaking the word for Bonnie Morgan's sister, Linda Speak, knowing that this family is embraced and uplifted in love and comfort and compassion, knowing that life is eternal and that love is eternal. And so I ask you to check within your heart in this moment to see if there is anyone in your heart that you would like to place into this prayer. I invite you to speak your own name and their name into this prayer. And as we continue to allow the names to be spoken in your own places, I give thanks for this moment of prayer. I give thanks for answered prayer, for I know that the moment the word is spoken, it is answered. The law says yes. Spirit says yes. It is done, my beloved. Rest assured. And so I give thanks for this. I release my word surrendering to the goodness of God. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you, beloveds. And now we move into our time of conscious giving. And I believe we'll have a slide that we can share with our giving statement. So we'll give them a few minutes to come up. And as we speak this giving statement together, I invite you to hold your, your hands on your heart, knowing that it is from this heart space that we speak these words. This gift that I give is God in action. It does good work in the world and blesses creation. And so it is. And I invite you to navigate yourself after this service, navigate yourself to our website, 
where you'll see that lovely donate button right there front and center. And you can click on it and give your donation to the Oakland Center for Spiritual Living, or you can also text us 510-327-3431, text the word give and the amount that you'd like to give. Very easy no hands touching anybody else's hands required so thank you thank you my beloveds and i will turn it over now to susan urquhart brown thank you thank you so much sally for that beautiful uh talk and blessing and i loved your story about the butterfly. Thank you so much. So, uh, and also I would like to thank the musicians and everyone who uh, participated in our service, everyone in our beautiful community. Thank you so much for being here and uh, lifting us in uh, spirit this morning for our very first exciting day, Sunday of 2021. So um, we, Judith Roberts will be hosting our prayer room right after service. And um, we'll take care of that in a few minutes. But um, also, if you want a prayer anytime from a practitioner, please go to our website, oaklandcsl.org. And there's a list of uh, practitioners who are there willing to pray with you and you know we love to pray so please don't hesitate to do that so as Sally said our affirmation during her talk um, let's say it together even though we won't be hearing each other but our beautiful beautiful uh affirmation for today is on the screen so let's say it together Steeped in the wisdom of the ages, I humbly resolve to evolve. And so it is. And now I would like to turn it over to our wonderful musicians, Kev and Omega.
Have a beautiful Sunday, OCSL family. Happy 2021.